Hello everyone, uh, my name is Marcin Kubacki, I'm Chief Software Architect at Stower and together with Artur Krzywdziński, uh, Enterprise Architect from Nutanix, we are going to discuss agentless backup and recovery for Nutanix. So in this webinar we will have a short overview of the Nutanix itself and later we'll go with the vProtect uh, solution that we are able to use for data protection in Nutanix environments. So, Arthur, let's go. Yeah. Hey everyone, um, Arthur here. Uh, I'm cust um, customer success enterprise architect at Nutanix. As Martin said today, we will focus mainly on the backup and data protection uh, with Nutanix. Well, let's talk about what the HCI is, like why, why it is so so cool, why it is so hot topic right now uh, in in IT. So. If you compare HCI to the standard three-tier uh, architecture, when you have your application virtualization, uh, with, with where you have your servers, your fabric, uh, so it is storage fabric, it is network fabric, and your backend storage, Nutanix brings all these things together to appliance like um, form factor, basically to simplify to to simplify management to simplify. Um, operations to simplify data data center architecture. Um, Nutanix is it's, it's a scalable solution. It's a scalable compute and storage uh, with building architecture uh, with security and the management plane as well. Okay, so so maybe a few words about the data protection services now. Yeah, so so with the. Where is it? Oh, here it is. So the data protection, so Nutanix was built with data protection in mind. So let's talk a little bit about the architecture first. Let's, mm -hmm. let's explain people what the HCI is, what actually Nutanix, how it works, what's the, you know, architecture. So first of all, uh, you can see it. So each, each node has its own compute, uh, RAM, CPU. Each node has its own storage, uh, minimum, count of a, a Nutanix cluster is a three nodes and on each and every node in a cluster there is a running a CVM. So CVM runs this, the core, CVM runs the software, uh, Nutanix software, which brings all these resources, so compute and storage together as a one distributed pool and present it to the hypervisor. Okay, so if I'm your customer, I want to purchase Nutanix Acropolis. Yes. Basically, what I will get? I mean, the box, and what does this box contain? Yeah, so, so you will get a box, and depends on the model you choose. You might mm -hmm. get the one box with the three nodes or four nodes. You might get the three boxes, which, uh, which note, one node per box, right? And on top of it, you will get the pre-installed the Nutanix Acropolis software ready to go. So what you have to do, you have to rack it and suck it, power it on, wait to um, Nutanix to boot up, and then from, from your browser, finish the configuration. So provide the IP addressing, name the convention, DNS, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I have N nodes in here. I believe that I can scale up by just adding these boxes. Yes, absolutely. So this is really, really good feature about HCI itself. So you can scale the platform linear, right? So you have predictable workload, you have predictable performance. So adding more nodes to the cluster, you don't only extend the CPU, so compute, but also you extend the storage and the network as well. So there is no bottlenecks like in traditional 3 tier architecture when at some point you scale scaling out just the compute but the storage is still the same to, for example, our storage controllers, right? Okay, so let's go on. So maybe a, a bit more about the uh, complete data protection strategy. So what, yeah. what can you tell us about it? Yeah, so Nutanix mm -hmm. does support complete data protection. So you can uh, have a backup, you can integrate the backup solution, for example, with every protect, right? We do support archiving, we do have our snapshot, uh, native snapshot capabilities, we do offer the disaster recovery and metro availability. So let's talk about metro and, and disaster recovery capabilities. So in terms of disaster recovery, Nutanix uh, provides uh, async replication, which is one hour RPO. We do provide near sync replication, which is around 15, uh, 15 seconds. 
We do provide synchronous, which is RPO0, and we do provide also the metro availability uh, as, a, as a solution. And then the metro was introduced very first time with the ESXi as a platform. Uh, that was uh, basically driven by the demand from the customers. So if I understand correctly, basically you are able to replicate using snapshot mechanism uh, That's data between two clusters. Two and, Nutanix clusters, exactly. And how far they can be from each other? So, so basically it depends on which protection method you choose, right? So uh, metro, metro availability, as name states, should be within the metro uh, area. So let's say if we have to data centers in Warsaw, which are far apart, let's say 10 kilometers, and you can provide a round trip uh, for the packages below five milliseconds, then basically you can leverage Metro, right, for your replication. If you have, uh, if you're planning to use the, um, let's say async, which is RPO zero, then obviously there is no such a man, so there is no such a big demand for a bandwidth and latency, so you can have uh, distances for hundreds of kilometers one from each other in Nutanix clusters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is a recent feature introduced in, in, in Acropolis 510. We did introduce the orchestration. So if you're familiar with, uh, with for example, with Zerto or with, uh, with uh, VMware SRM, so Site Recovery Manager or Azure Site Recovery Manager, uh, this is basically a Nutanix solution which helps you orchestrate um, your recovery plan. So you can, you can um, test your recovery plans, and you can orchestrate them, meaning that you can set up the booth uh, order, you can re-IP your virtual machines after the failover, you can include the scripts, uh, custom scripts after the failover, you can have uh, a reporting, a compliance and governments, and also the, the monitoring. So this is, uh, th this is our uh, solution which helps you uh, streamline and orchestrate your disaster recovery uh, strategy with Nutanix. Mm, perfect. Um, metro availability, uh, that's quick note here, uh, is very popular in EMEA. Actually, the demand came from, a, from EMEA. So metro, uh, metro is uh, two Nutanix clusters which are working together, replicating uh, uh, synchronously actively the data from primary side to secondary side and vice versa. So you can have active workloads on both sides and two clusters, two Nutanix clusters replicating across, across the sides. And on, on top of the Nutanix, you have your hypervisor, which is logically stretched across the two data centers, uh, which from management uh, perspective, management plane perspective, you see like a single compute cluster. Uh -huh. even though they are in the two different data centers. Okay, uh, and do you have other options to replicate maybe somewhere else data, not only to the secondary cluster? Yes, so you could replicate to the um, secondary cluster, you can um, replicate to the tertiary cluster. Also, we do provide a uh, um, new service, which is disaster recovery as a service. So it is for uh, Nutanix customers, basically, uh, what you can do is, you, if you have Nutanix cluster, you can replicate your data from on-prem into the cloud, Nutanix cloud, which is basically uh, the same uh, software you are having on-prem and management plane you're having on-prem and in cloud. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, we have regions in West, West America, we have region in the East America, um, United States, sorry, we have, uh, op we did open a couple of months back in UK. We are opening new regions in Italy as well as the APJ. Okay, so maybe if you could show us. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. Let's switch to the demo so I can quickly show you uh, how to, how to, how Nutanix console looks like. So let's go to, to the uh, Prism Central. So the Prism Central, for those who, who is not familiar with it, is this the management plane, central management plane for Nutanix clusters. So you can connect uh, tens of clusters with hundreds of nodes, and you can see it on the, you know, on, on the dashboard. So from here, you can, you can manage, you can create the VMs, you can do your capacity planning, you can uh, work with, uh, uh, new, uh, with the networking. 
But what I would like to show you is how to, how to create the VM, how quickly you can create the VM, and how quickly you can actually um, protect it uh, through the native Nutanix um, uh, mechanism. So let's, let's go to the, to the cluster. So the cluster is in version, the latest version, which was released uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, which is 5.11. So um, quickly to the VM uh, tab, and then from here you click to the create VM. So let's provide a name, so webinar. Uh, description we don't need, you can create time zone. And uh, then let's put some compute in here. Uh, a bit more memory. Um, now we need to, <coughs> we need to add uh, a disk. So by default, you create it with the CD-ROM on the IDE bus. So let's connect, let's add the SCSI storage. Um, you choose the container, the first one by default, let's say 40 gigs. Um, you don't choose the uh, SCSI ID, it just picks up the next available, click it out. Uh, that would be nice to have some networking as well. Uh, so with the 5.11, we did introduce support for UFI. So if you need UFI, you absolutely can do that now. Let's do the networking. So pick up the VLAN, you can keep it connected, disconnected. All right. So we have it here. You can, if, if you would like to have it pinned to the host, so we do support VM host affinity, so you can pick up the host, but uh, I'm not planning to do that right now. There is no need for it. Um, you can supply post custom script if you want to. So let's click it save. And let's find it out. So we're here. Here we go. Okay. And let's power it on. All right. It takes a few seconds to power VM on. So let's let me show you quickly how you can protect your VM. So this is the data protection uh, tab. So from here you create the new protection domain, which is ACDR in this case, provide that quickly um, name, come on, and then our VM. Yep. And it is, it is protected right now, so you click uh, next, you create a new schedule. You pick up, you know, every hour. You pick up how many snapshots, let's say, in the target site. 60 minutes, sorry about that. Create a schedule. And that's it. Your machine is being protected by the Nutanix out of the box. So that's it, that's, that's, that is so easy. But again, uh, people think that data protection covers them from, you know, they, they're treating like a silver bullet, bullet, right? Solve all the problems. But actually this is not, not true. So to have it properly protected, um, your, your workloads, you need, a, <coughs> you need a proper backup solution. And then I'm, I'm gonna switch it. I will give the ball to, to Martin to talk about the, Okay, so um, we, we have to be aware that uh, obviously uh, async or whatever, some kind of synchronization or replication between two clusters is one way to protect your data. But still, your errors, your problems <coughs> that rise on your primary side will be eventually replicated to the secondary absolutely, side. Absolutely. So, so you have to keep in mind that you need to have some sort of uh, way to recover to a specific point in time in case of other issues that may arise that could be actually replicated. And uh, to do that, you will need a, a backup solution that basically is able to fill this gap. And especially that uh, you are going probably to use, well, among the other platforms that you have in your data center, because we protect, uh, well, is, is one, protects one, many actually platforms, but Nutanix is one of the very most important uh, platforms that we support currently. Um, so basically, uh, you may want to use vProtect not only to have a um, standalone solution to protect your, your backups, to export 
snapshots to some, let's say, storage, whatever you have, like file system, like uh, uh, maybe NAS server, whatever you have, but also to existing enterprise grade backup providers. We quite often we actually get uh, questions from from our customers if we support specific uh, enterprise grade backup provider. Yeah, so Martin, for example, I'm buying Nutanix, right? AG. Yeah. I have my backup. I'm, I'm you know. I'm uh, pretty happy with it, so, or, you know, I just prolonged the contract with the backup vendor. So, what is the use case? Where, where, where you see the work, like how, we, how you can help to, to unify the backup management in my data center? Yeah, companies? it's quite often that you already have IBM Spectrum Protect or some, some, For example, some, yeah. some other kind of technology. And you have multiple, uh, multiple <coughs> hypervisor platform and multiple backup providers, actually, even in your data center. Yeah. It's quite a common theme. So, in that case, we basically are the missing puzzle between these two worlds. So you okay. are able to deploy vProtect and Nutanix and export these snapshots to your uh, enterprise grade backup solution, or maybe you just have already some kind of other object storage. When I'm saying object storage, it doesn't really mean that it has to be in the cloud. Like here, we can see that there is S3, for instance, connector. The yep. same connector actually means that you're able to use uh, your on-prem object storage as well. Right. So, uh, Which that's is a great story because we do provide as a company also S3 storage capabilities. Yes. Right? Yes. So you could leverage your clusters to, as a backup target for the protect, for example. Yes. Um, so moving on, actually, well, you, the, the second thing that we need, we need to discuss is actually scalability. You can have multiple uh, clusters, in fact, clusters in your, uh, in your data center. Eventually, you're going to have um, scalability issues. So vProtect handles that by providing multiple data movers. We call them nodes. Each node needs to be uh, installed on each cluster. Uh, so we have also vProtect server. vProtect server basically is a central point of management of API and basically metadata storage. So you have, if, if I have two or three Nutanix clusters that I'm deploying one appliance per cluster and manage them from your... From a single, from a single, single management plane. plane. Okay. You can add more, more. we'll get into that okay. so if you would like to perform better uh, because of the hyperconvergence. Okay. So maybe, maybe you would like to have three nodes, for one for each hypervisor, not well, for, 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 for a complete cluster. Um, let's talk about the, uh, a little bit more details about the architecture. Uh, focus, let's focus on the left side of this picture. Uh, we have talked about virtualization platform, Nutanix per se, okay? So we are creating snapshots, export data. Uh, however, one aspect that is also quite important is to protect maybe specific applications on, on top of that already run on your Nutanix. Uh, so if you have, if you would like to use your um, native mechanism, like maybe database mechanisms for pro data protection, or you have some sort of already custom scripts that interact basically with, uh, with your application, then you are able to use them in vProtect. So we have the generic mechanism in that case to basically export this configuration either over SSH uh, or basically invoke your custom script or command uh, to protect this particular application. So let's say I have database, I'm a SQL, let's say, with a couple of databases. So I could use your, your solution to protect the whole virtual machine, but also invoke the database backup within the VM. Yes, so, okay. so we tend to also, do, we receive also questions about the data consistency. Right. And let me go further because it's covered in a few more slides. Uh, so main features, basically we are focusing on the VM level backup in this case, so it is snapshot. We basically are able to uh, extract uh, individual drives, so we are able to exclude some of them. Uh, it's agentless. You don't have to install anything. Uh, in case of Nutanix, we just need some proxy virtual machine. Uh, mm, that we also provide snapshot management capabilities. So that's an enhancement on top of what, what we already support. Um, we already talked about the possible backup providers. And one very important thing we also tend to be asked by customers more, more and more, uh, sometimes they already have some sort of service that uh, is basically handling the orchestration or some sort of self-service capabilities. And we are able to integrate within such, uh, such portal with RESTful API that we offer. 
So when we start actually in implementation, basically we, we prepare basically a virtual machines for the nodes, install the RPM, and you add your back, your hypervisor manager. In this case, we are talking about Prism Element. So you add, add them to our, our console, uh, initiate inventory scan, which basically collects all of the information okay. that's like virtual machines, right? Process, right? right. We need to know what- VM inventory. Basically. Yes. Uh, you can back up them manually, but probably you're going to set policies and schedules according to which they should be backed up. And you have two actually uh, scenarios, well, actually three scenarios, uh, how to restore your okay. machine. So for the most obvious is restore back to some cluster, one of these that you have already in the inventory, but you can also have backup to be mounted and that enables you to do file level restore. Okay or you can share individual drives over iSCSI. That's very uh, handy if you have Windows machines, for instance. Okay. You can basically share individual drive directly from vProtect node to your target Windows machine, for instance. Okay. And that actually answers the question about the permissions like Windows attributes, Windows uh, groups, and uh, other um, attributes that are basically not uh, handled very well, maybe from the Linux uh, kind of operation. So, so the data in this last case over the SCAS, so the data is being presented from Newtonix or from the backup store? No, it is from presented the... from the vProtect node. Oh, okay, so I don't have to copy the data first to be presented. I can present it straight away from... The... That really depends. Okay. Uh, that really depends because uh, for the increments, we need to merge them first. Okay. Uh, so, so obviously in the future we're going to probably provide some more synthetic backup capabilities, but currently we need to merge the blocks uh, first and later present the drive uh, as, uh, as a drive to, yeah, as, to a, the as, as a block device yeah. over SCSI, yeah. That's what I already <coughs> mentioned. So we, you can install vProtect server basically anywhere, but you need to uh, have vProtect node one per cluster and we are using disk attachment method in this case, snapshot, Disk attach, export to your backup destination, and later uh, the Tasha drive. So everything through the API. Uh, yeah, everything through the API. So uh, that's that's what all, Nutanix already offers it pretty pretty well. So it's 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 nice to have them. Especially one thing that I haven't mentioned here, uh, CBT, uh, or actually in Nutanix terminology, is CRT, yes. right? Change <laughs> region tracking. So that enables you also to have incremental backups as well. A very efficient incremental backups. Yeah, uh, backup consistency. That's very important, especially in hyperconvergence. When we create snapshot, uh, it it may not be the point in time in, in very let's say if your virtual machine is heavily used. Okay, these blocks may not already have been synced to your drives. Maybe they are being replicated in the meantime. So uh, if you would like to have more consistent backup not just crash consistent, you can enable uh, application consistent snapshots in vProtect. So basically we'll ask uh, a Nutanix API to have appropriate um, level of consistency. That requires additional tools on the Nutanix. And if it is that still not enough for you, uh, you're able to invoke pre-post uh, remote commands on a particular VM. Uh, that's over SSH, so you need to have SSH running. But still, you can quiet and resume database okay. before and after snapshot takes place. Snapshot management, basically, uh, you define policies. How, uh, and these policies, obviously, if, uh, you are able to select which, according to which schedules, snapshots will be created um, and how many of them you would like to keep, how long they, uh, how long they should be kept as well. Um, especially very important that uh, for, for Nutanix, Nutanix handles very efficiently snapshots. It's not uh, like a snapshot chain, it's, it's more efficient way. So you don't really have to worry about too many snapshots uh, per se in Nutanix. Yes, yes. Uh, we have a very efficient way to manage it. So, so that's, that's one of the enhancements that you also can use. And now a few words about application backup. So you can imagine that from our perspective, application is something actually pretty generic. So it, it can be set of files. Um, so, or maybe just uh, database uh, backup or whatever you would like to have. So you have multiple uh, applications running and all of them should share uh, some sort of command 
configurations. Basically, it means that you describe how you would like to invoke this backup, if you would like to export data, where this data is going to be exported so we can grab it and later push to the same set of backup providers that, you already, that we already support. They actually, this is a, an example even of our own database being backed up using this mechanism. So it is this one of the um, examples that you can use. A uh, few words about the backup providers. Um, that's the example of using uh, IBM Spectrum Protect uh, for, for handling the, uh, let's say, tiering in this case. So you're able, we are communicating over TSM API, uh, push data to the IBM Spectrum Protect. Later, you're able to push data to cloud storage pools, for instance. Similar aspect with Dell EMC Data Domain, we are able to use DD Boost file system plugin to store backups on the data domain. And this is a great example of using file system connector in our case, especially that is an efficient way of storing these backups there. Uh, we also have built-in data the duplication. It's with, uh, with video. Uh, so that's the alternative if you'd like to use just uh, plain storage already handled by the project. Uh, we have talked about the um, uh, actually object storage uh, a bit uh, earlier. So uh, we can push backups to some object sources, especially cloud providers. And uh, you also are able to keep last backup locally so that you, you will boost the restore process if needed. That needs some sort of uh, bigger staging space if you would like to, to have it on-prem, but still it's one way to have it um, have faster recovery. So I'm thinking that the cloud would be rather archiving than instant restore, right? So you would keep the data with yeah, the data right. center and then yes. offshore yes. it to your cloud yes. provider for archiving. Techni technically, yes. Okay. So it's all about the simplicity. We have several ways to manage the protect. One is uh, a uh, web interface. Uh, second, line, second, thing, second uh, um, way is to com use command line interface if you'd like to script maybe something. And we are ready for integration. So you, this is the example with Red Hat Cloud Forms uh, where we are able to expose our API and integrate with the third party solutions that basically focus on the self-service or orchestration okay. in the data Excellent. center. Okay, so let's maybe now go Show to us the... what, what the protect can do. <laughs> yeah, so here is my browser. So what you are currently look at, it's a small demo environment. <coughs> I have Nutanix console in here. So here um, basically is my cluster. I have set of VMs already running. One of them is vProtect. We've installed um, both server and node, okay? So, so in our example, it's, it's a little bit uh, easier. Uh, and I'm logging into the vProtect console right now. I see the dashboard. I know that I have uh, one VM protected. I have one application being protected. I have single node already here in, and I see how much staging space is available in there. And I have actually local file system that is uh, available. Um, so the local file system is on a Vprotect server itself? It's yes, this okay. is because this is, this, in, this, in right. this example, I have only uh, a single virtual machine. Uh, but yes, you are able to obviously to add more. Right. And have different policies, let's say that this group of VMs is going to the file system, but the other group of virtual machines is just goes to the, TSM or to the TSM data or domain yes. or go to straight to the cloud. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, most <coughs> customers tend to have, uh, they tend to choose, uh, so they want particular high, um, backup provider to be in place. But yes, you can add more if you, if you need that. Right. So I have one node, I can, if I have more, probably I would love to use uh, some sort of configuration that is uh, basically applies the same set of settings for multiple nodes. So how do you deploy the nodes? Do you deploy them automatically or from a console or you have to do it manually? How Current, currently it's a, it's, a, it's a manual process. Okay. Basically you just install single RPM. Okay. And 
invoke one command to register it to the e server. Oh. So the, the good thing is that nodes are stateless, so even if you lose them, you later are able to recover easily by re-registering. Right, them. so the config is kept on the, on the server? Yes, on so the server. yes. What I have mentioned here basically is being fetched by the node <coughs> via API. Right. So you don't have to worry about losing that. The only thing you need to protect is the database that resides under the server. So single point... You backup your backup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and back up your backup. That's very important because you you probably don't want to lose um, yeah. backups on your, on your storage, yes. yeah, especially that one. So in my case, I have a Nutani Express element added already in here. I am I'm able to add <coughs> other Prism elements as well. Uh, and here you have other options if you if you would like to use uh, maybe OpenStack or whatever you have in your data center. Uh, that means that when we have inventory scanning invoked, uh, we have a task here in the console. This basically connects to the infrastructure, collects information about the hypervisor. So in your case, uh, Nutanix nodes and uh, virtual machines, clusters, whatever you have uh, on, the, on the other side. <coughs> then you go to the virtual environment stuff. So here is the place where I can see some, the, well, what virtual machines are present. I have already one that has been removed, so maybe I have deleted the wrong one yeah. I want to recover. Uh, I have uh, several buttons. Let's maybe invoke some backup. This one exists. I want to have incremental backup. It's going to, to be faster. And now this is basically creates a task. And uh, in Vprotect, in Vprotect uh, this is a two-step process. <coughs> First, we export data to our staging space. Okay. So this is the moment where this uh, um, this um, node basically attaches drives, dumps data, uh, uses CBT. So basically, it's the, always the node that communicates with the uh, with the actual environment. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin, let me ask you: Does Vprotect provide any uh, alerting capabilities? Let's say. Failed, failed jobs, yes. jobs uh, things yes. like that. Yes, so for instance, uh, here in the settings, uh, I have an uh, option to notify via email about recently failed tasks. Okay. So, so it collects information and if it notices mm -hmm. that, uh, let's say in, within the last 15 minutes there were some backups that have right. failed, you will receive... Or like a missed backup window, things like that. Uh, yeah, because basically when we, when we have... Um, you, you are going to receive also the daily report. Okay. You're going to see that tasks have failed, so they should be should have something like a task has expired. Okay. Says because they had were supposed to run within five hours, but they because of the um, whatever some reason. bottleneck yeah. or whatever, they, they couldn't be executed right. within your limits. It could be also scalability, right? So you, you add more Nutanix node, you add more data, uh, maybe yes. you should add more uh, we protect the proxy service De to, definitely. And to make, increase you know, the speed uh, of the backup and, and the resource as well. Yeah, maybe you'd like to increase the number of simultaneous export tasks. Exactly. So, because exactly. maybe you think that single nodes should be able to, to handle more workload. Uh, so it's always about the fine tuning. Uh, now I have initiated the uh, uh, export task, export has completed, and store task basically have stored data on the local <coughs> file system. Now, the good thing is that if you're using file system, you can actually make it um, so it also is being used as the staging space. The advantage is that that stored task doesn't take any time because basically it moves files. In right. Space. He understands that it is okay, this is the same file system, so I don't have to do additional copying. Now, uh, a few words about the restore options. So that's the first what I have talked. So restore yeah. to file system means basically that we are giving you the original files without doing anything. But you are probably interested more in the uh, restore to hypervisor capabilities. So you are probably basically <coughs> saying which hypervisor manager, I have only one, which cluster, mm -hmm. specify optionally some, some name. And this basically, uh, is doing the restore job to the uh, invokes restore job and later pushes data to the uh, hypervisor manager. This basically is again two step process restore and invoke. Okay. Now the second option is to mount uh, uh, mount backup. This is what I have already mentioned earlier. So you can mount file systems automatically. It's very especially cool when you have a Linux machine because basically it also is going to mount 
all of the different uh, file systems. Like you have home directory maybe mounted uh, different uh, disk, different yeah, exactly. disk, but basically like you have technically several file systems. You want them to appear on the single uh, single um, mount. single mount point. Yeah. So this is the mount point on the on the node here. Mm -hmm. uh, but here in the backup mounted backups, I already have one. I'm able to go to the details and under this mount point, I have one of the uh, of the backups oh, already mounted. Nice. So here I'm able to browse individual files, right. uh, select which of them I would like to download and restore backups directly from the web interface. So let's say we did restore the VM on Nutanix. What, what, what the administrator has to do after the restore? What, is How are you done? All so right. I, here I have two, enough, huh? <laughs> yeah, so here I have two example restores. Mm -hmm. Basically what we did, what we did were, was to back up this Linux machine that disappeared already and this is the machine that has been restored okay. so 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 the restore process uh, restores completely virtual machine however we have to mention about few few words more about the details here detail stuff okay so let's talk <coughs> about the disks because you probably want to exclude some of them uh, this means that if you are going to restore this virtual machine back you will have these drives, but empty, because right. you have excluded them. So there is no data, but we uh, recover basically the uh, whole topology of the right. VM in this So case, like a swap right? partition for a swap disk uh, for, yes, for, this, for yes, example, Yes, right? so if you have separate drive, basically you at least you will have, uh, have it back, yeah. so you don't have to think about some missing drive that you have okay. had uh, before. A um, <clears throat> few other details in this tab, okay? So I have a list of my backups. You can see that there is a complete chain, like full plus several increments. Uh, maybe you would like to see if some of them has failed. Um, none of them has failed, so it is hard for me to actually uh, see that, yeah. Uh, snapshots, if you have snapshot management capability in place. Uh, here I see that this particular snapshot is there on the new, new, Nutanix. It's not visible from the Nutanix console. Okay. It's like in Nutanix, there are two separate uh, snapshot mechanisms, actually, right. uh, two, two separate APIs. So we are using the one for backup purposes and here from this console, you're able to later to re restore virtual machine back from this snapshot. Uh, effective <coughs> schedules, a few words about the policies and applications, okay? Just these two topics we need to cover to have a complete picture. Application, what I have already uh, shown you, that's the example of vProtect database. You can have, let's say, database one, database two, database three. All of them are going to use some sort of the command execution configuration. It can be executed here as the local command on the node, or maybe you would like to invoke something over SSH. So that gives you a flexibility. If you have SSH blocked, for instance, but you still mm -hmm. want to back up MySQL database, right. for instance, you are using MySQL client, in this case, on the node, and it's just need to provide some parameters to this particular command, right? Um, so that's the generic approach we can, and the, 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 that's actually working very similar to the uh, virtual machine. So when I have, <coughs> have invoked the backup, it's actually invoking the command. This one is local. It's going to call this command, collect the file, the output file of this command, and later store it. So here I see that uh, export has already completed. And in the, uh, in the application details, I have our different statistics, exactly the same like for virtual machine. This one, uh, also for the, well, that, that's the same view like for mm -hmm. the virtual machine, also is, is uh, actually um, quite nice to see which particular phase takes most of, of the time. Sometimes it just waits in the queue. Sometimes is, you see that, that there is a growing bottleneck on your storage or something. So this is a good place to find out. Bottleneck. The bottle. Bottleneck, so exactly. Uh, policies. So we have policies and schedules. So in, in policies, you are able to define which VMs are going to be backed up to which backup destination and according to which schedules. Here, there is an auto assignment option. So you are able, for Nutanix, you are able to define regular expression uh, rules uh, based on the virtual machine name. If the virtual machine starts with NTP, you don't have to backup. Okay. Now, this means that the VM can be automatically assigned to the policies. Uh, if, you, if you have yet another VM, 
uh, maybe you'd like to just uh, somehow skip all of these instances for a particular, if you, that's important if you have naming conditions. Right, so, so do you guys, maybe you already have, maybe you have on a row, but do you plan to support like a categories or, or VM tags? Uh, for more flexible uh, in the, policy in the previous, management. In the previous, uh, in the previous <coughs> releases of Nutanix, I remember that there were some sort of security labels. Uh, that, so that didn't match really the concept mm -hmm. of tag. Uh, we support it already for Ref, so definitely for Nutanix right. we are going to So now you can future. create not only security, but categories, but also backup tags. and recovery tags. And yes, so, so yes, exactly. So we already have this mechanism right. in place. We just need to scan for them in the, in the, in the new tank. Okay. So that's future, but still it's something that we can implement <coughs> uh, very easily. Uh, backup destinations, we also have been talking about it in the, in the uh, slide part, in the presentation part. Here is just a, a, sh a short overview of what we are able to use currently, uh, especially that you are maybe interested in file system and have option to deduplicate uh, your file system that you already are able to present. So it's very, uh, let's say, cheap way of doing the, uh, of presenting storage and using the same storage that you already have. Um, that's it, I believe. So we have covered most of the topics uh, so I believe that uh, now it's a good moment to have some um, Q and A. So if you have any questions, just uh, just you can unmute yourself uh, or type in questions in the chat. If there is no questions, you can always find us on the LinkedIn. Yeah, definitely. Uh, LinkedIn. Both of us, we are active on LinkedIn, so feel free to reach out, send yeah, send uh, you know direct message through LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. Martin and I myself I'm, will go back to you with the answers you need. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, so and see you next. Webinar, then. Yeah, thank you so much, Martin. Definitely. Th thank you, thank you, Arthur. So, um, just drop us any any sort of questions, and and we are in touch. So stay tuned for the next webinars with with uh, with Vprotect. Thank you so much. Bye.